Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of news, a couple of things that you guys are definitely going to find interesting. So first things first, we're going to start by talking about those that applied for the Beacon boxes. They have started arriving. A huge shout out to Bat for starting this thread on BlenderArtists.org. And yes, a couple of people have started getting theirs. And just in case you applied for yours, you know, don't panic. It's coming. You can come right here and take a look at some of those that have actually gotten theirs. But you know the drill. You don't need to open this. This is supposed not to be opened until the 30th of the month. So with this said, we're also going to talk about the Beacon 3 that is starting up. So we already talked about this one before. Beacon 3 will be starting up on the 21st of October. It's needless to say that Blender 2.91 is getting into its beta. So right now they're looking at fixing nine high priority bugs and you might actually want to see more stuff here which they've talked about and i'm also going to link this letter down in the description and at the moment there are about 528 bugs nine of them are high priority bugs and 18 are tagged as 2.91 so if you want to read more about these things you want to see the bugs you want to see where they relate to link to this is going to be in the description so you can take a look at that now the ui team are also meeting up just to make sure that certain things are in place of course we've seen a huge improvement with blender's ui over a period of time and right now they are still looking at modalities and ways to even make it way better so there is also a huge conversation about this taking a look at human interface guidelines you know transparency and also patch reviews stuff like this to actually help make the ui look better are being discussed at this point so if you're a ui fan you want to contribute to things like this you can simply come take a look at this and see how you can best improve this particular stuff and while we're talking about ui there is also a brand new proposal for the coding style of blender to be updated now this one is more for the developers and there is a motivational part that has to do with this where consistent comments across the code base are generally good for readability but then there is a strong proposal for these things to be written in third person perspective so once someone else is reading the code and they're using certain terminologies it's best for these things to be better described explained so when you have non-obvious algorithms or you have you know hidden assumptions people get to understand what you're coding for and how you get to make these things work now there are certain style and syntaxes that have been laid out and ways that you can go through and work with these things and just in case you are interested in reading the code uh, you want to see how blender is being written up or maybe you're a developer and you just want to take a look at this right now this makes sense and a huge shout out for the guys at the blender foundation for you know thinking about this and trying to make sure that the style guide for the coding is being implemented now with all of these beautiful things said let's take a look at the brand new set of features that are now available in blender 2.91 so with blender 2.91 open we're going to start off by talking about you know something that is fairly fairly um how should i put this people don't really recognize these changes but of course it makes sense to notice it of course a lot of people may not notice this one but it is good and if you're working with blender 2.9 or you know older versions you would also notice that this is pretty new so this is what we used to have which looks like an information and for the case I think the new one makes sense because what you're being asked is a question and it is not an information and i think it just you know general overhauling of things like this are nice okay so with this one here there are also some pretty cool improvements that has to do with another set of ui that deals with the uv when you select an object right now and switch over to the uv section there is now an overlay all right so there is now an overlay and you can simply play with this overlay in the previous version of blender or you know older versions if i simply press tab and go over to the uvs you would notice that we don't have that now something else which i also found out is when you right click you notice we do have weld but in the new version which is a 2.91 once you select an object right click we now have split stitch and merge so the weld is now taken out and i think stitch compensates for the weld and you also see that we have different forms of merging 
contrary to just the single platform of merging that we once had. So it's very interesting to see that we are having these pretty cool features and I really love the fact that we now have stuff like this. So it's easier for you to take this down to see what you have and you punch this all the way up in case you want to see the wireframe on top of what you're working on at a given time. So with these beautiful things said, let's also take a look at another update. So the next update which we're going to be looking at is the grease pencil. So the grease pencil has a brand new tool which you can now simply activate if you go over to edit, go over to the preference section, let's drag this right here and within your add-ons you need to type the word grease. So you'll find out that we have a grease pencil tool. Let's add a brand new grease pencil so I'm just going to do that. Let's take off the cube so let's simply write the word blender and I'm just going to write that right here. So once you're done writing this you can now simply press N on your keyboard and choose to do a box the form so once you select the box the form you can now easily way more than ever select any of these nodes that you have here and you can deform the grease pencil now this is very very awesome now you have this lattice deformer and with this lattice deformer you can actually come in here and increase either the uv or the w so you can choose to make this about maybe six for example stretch this all the way to six as well and then you can select and do stuff like so if you're looking for multiple ways of selecting you can also use the lasso selection to select multiple select this and now you can move your grease pencil however you choose and once you're done with what you want simply press enter to authenticate that and for example if you're within your object mode you can simply press tab on the keyboard all right select this select your lasso and then you can select several parts so let's say you just want to increase or play with the b for example maybe the top part you can also select that and use the box deform to deform just that part alone you can also make a multi-selection so we can select all of this part as well actually let's select all of this part and you can choose to rotate these things and you can also scale them however you want so while we're still speaking about the grease pencil tool add-on there is a straight stroke feature that exists there so for example most times when you're trying to draw a straight stroke you notice that we have a couple of artifacts as it travels through you can now use this to convert that to a straight line a straight stroke something like that so for example let's also try something else if you maybe make mistake and do a curve which is supposed to be straight you can now convert that to something like so if you try to make something like this and you click on you know straight curve is going to fold all that stuff and convert it to a straight you know stroke so this is best when you just want to create stroke so for example for those who would want to make long strokes or you know you're trying to make strokes that are straight this is going to be very 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 useful for you but if you're trying to create one full shape it's going to fold all of that stuff into uh, a very tiny box that will essentially be a straight stroke so for example let's say you want to type the word g for example and you do something like that it's going to fold that if you want to go with let's use another word let's say you want to do something like an r for example or maybe you're going for what other word let's say you want to do an a so normally you're supposed to get maybe straight strokes like this no it's going to fold all of that stuff for you you also notice that we have a tiny force here which you can turn up and turn down so you can use this to play with how much of a straight of straightness you want so you can choose the straight force and use this to implement certain things now this one will come in handy if you don't want to implement a full stroke of straight stuff or you don't want to convert everything to that straight uh, stroke you can use this to make some tiny tiny you know updates to whatever typeface or whatever drawing you're creating so with that done let's take a look at something else so pablo has actually gone ahead to tease this pretty cool feature what he has implemented is pretty simple he kind of calls it the cloth brush plasticity that is now an implementation to the cloth brush so if you're working with the cloth brush right now you will be able to actually use the grab feature that exists with the cloth brush and you know create that plasticity effect now how you can actually get this one going of course you might not necessarily see it as it's something that is now grounded in the implementation form so it's just there for you to use you may not notice it unless you compare it with other versions of blender so right now you can take a look at the screen and of course you can see within the previous grab this is what you used to get so you can see the differences between these things and this would help for subtle movement of meshes 
and you'd also notice that you don't really have all of those artifacts that you have when you're working with the previous version of Blender. Something else which I think a couple of you guys may have forgotten is this. So I'm going to go back and show you guys this and I haven't really seen a lot of use case for that but it is this very tiny boundary brush and I've actually looked around to see if a lot of people will be using that and no one seems to be using it so I'm just going to talk about it one more time. So remember when we talked about the boundary brush we said you can use it for you know packaging, folding things up and down and then we also talked about the fact that Pablo has also implemented this clothes simulation feature all right so this clothes simulation feature is here so in case you kind of missed that it is still here doing pretty cool stuff and yes you can choose from different types or you know, different deformation types so we can go with the twist and you can twist this and this is going to be good for those who are into you know creating things like cottons and stuff like that yep you might find this one very useful and then if we switch these to grab for example you can also use this and, and grab your object and actually use it to stretch the object. So if we go back and right click, change this to smooth shade, come all the way back to sculpting. Yeah, uh, a lot of cool features that you can now do within the sculpting room by simply grabbing a fresh copy of Blender and start working with it. So with this here, let's take a look at some pretty cool news that the guys at sketchfab actually announced so just in case you're working with sketchfab or you're using sketchfab before there's an update to their blender add-on so if you simply take a look right here you see there's a couple of announcements and stuff you know a couple of tips and you can actually get this add-on for free right here so it's within github i'm gonna put a link to this one in the description it's totally free so you can grab it and yes now with this here if you go over to your blender and you have that add-on installed if you press n on your keyboard you will notice you have sketchfab now the beautiful thing with this is there are tons and tons of cool and also free contents that you can get from here so when you come around here and you choose to search for anything you can simply search for a huge huge set of stuff so let's take a look at something that we can get actually let's scroll all the way up and maybe I can bring this one in. This is quite large, so let's find something pretty small that we can load right in here. And yes, so we can load the 22.89 megabyte file. So once we click on import model, it's gonna go in and import that model directly in here. And from there, we'll be able to play with it and do some stuff. So with this here, you would also be able to take a look at the model. And for a model like this, let's simply go in and take a look at this by using ev now this doesn't just import the mesh as it also imports the texture as well so you can actually go in there inspect this as much as you want and of course you can use here to make some searches so if you're looking for cars you can just simply type the word car and see the kind of cars that you can get and of course you can see there's a couple of them and these ones are totally free and if you click right here you would also be able to search and sort things by categories and if you have any model that you want to export to sketchfab you can simply use the export section right here add in the title description put in the tags required for it and you can simply upload directly from blender over to sketchfab so if you're feeling excited about any of these things wondering about the beacon 20 comfort box or you want to grab this plugin or read more about the update and also implementation of pretty cool stuff happening within the blender foundation link to all of these things that we've talked about is going to be in the description so you can do well to check these things out so tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace